Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. All right, friends and neighbors, hope you have your favorite beverage of choice on hand. We're going to start off this comments with a positive comment. And this comes from Hulu 2, and they say this coffee and correct grammar was particularly enlightening. The content no more interesting than any other, however. Being a brother from another mother, as I consider myself, having paid attention to do so much you have shared with all of us over the years, whoa, years, I done so without charge, amazing, just amazing, priceless, in fact. What truly was most obvious in this presentation for me was that you don't just talk, honor, and grace, and hope you physically expressed it clearly. Your body language and the chosen way you now express and communicate to us seems to me that there is at work a clear esoteric value to CSS, CPSG that transcends the results of the mere mechanics of the technology. For those who have been paying close attention, taking the ut utmost advantage of all you provided, they see it too, and chances are, for lack of the right words, that same esoteric growth is happening to them as well. I'd just like to end with something Kane of Kung Fu TV fame said. To thank you is as to cheapen the gift. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with those sen sentiments as a brother from another mother, Hulu too. And thank you for the comment and the kind words. Next comment comes from member and longtime viewer, Razvan. And uh, they say, this is really, this really is boilerplate after all this time. I'm still amazed by this technology. For this claim, it's cognition of this backward psychology video publication is with the hope and with the wish claim of the successful library with this message by this claim, it's volition. Minus times minus equals plus. Not sure what that last part means, but it is in uh, parentheses, so. It's not on the page, but let's let's check it out anyways. Read it backwards, just like you would check a math problem to certify the mathematical interface. It would say, for this claim, its volition of this message is with the successful library of the wish claim and of the hope. With this backward psychology video publication by this claim, its cognition. That's a, that's a very nice sentence there, Razvan. It's mathematically certified, the positional sequencing is 100% correct. Just a couple little nitpicks in there. There's some, looks like some uh, inconsistencies with the spacing, like it looks like there's a double spacing between publication and the verb is. And also, successful. Particle of negation, S-U-C is a particle of negation, um, if you look it up. But those are just small things that no one would ever take issue with being that this is a grammar channel and I'm the tutor I'm just going to put those in there but that's an awesome sentence thank you very much 
two thumbs up from me. Next comment comes from RDPD. And they say, uh, Jason, to me, you are a certified tutor. I am very... I very much enjoy your content. I enjoy the fact that it gives me knowledge. Please forgive my question, but it burns in my mind. In some videos, you wear the wool hat like you do here, and I remember the shirt with also a skull-like picture or something on it. I have to ask, and I ask to please you to please reply. If I see skulls or something like that showing of any kind regarding to CSS CPSG, I cannot help myself to be thinking Jolly Roger. Could you be clear on this matter? Thanks. While I didn't really see a question in there, and I think I did ask them for clarification, I can kind of see what they're saying there. And that skull that you see, whether it's on the hat or on the shirt, has nothing, no more meaning to me than it's related to the Marvel Comics character, the Punisher. That's the be-all, end-all of it. It means nothing else. I mean, the the value of something is what you ascribe to it. If it means something else to you, if it means Jolly Roger to you, that's, uh, you know, that's your deal. But for me, it's <laughs> that particular context of that t-shirt and that hat with the way the skull is drawn, just, it's the Punisher character from Marvel Comics. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Walter Jones, and they say, Claim that you are alive and not dead at sea. And that's a comment on the mini class I did on the live life claim. Um, I mean, that's one way to look at it. Again, like I said in the last comment, uh, in my Kuliana, the last comment, the value of something is what you ascribe to. It. But that is not what a live life claim is uh, in its basic essentials. It's basically three live life claim witnesses coming together to certify that you are a live life claimant, that you're alive, that you're breathing, that you're a live creature. That's it. Um, and it also serves to, if your name is in the copyright copy claim section and only your name, it serves to show that you hold the copyright to that punctuated upper and lowercase name, whatever that may be. Uh, if someone else's name is in that copyright copy claim section, then someone else holds the copyrights to your name, your punctuated name. But that's basically what it is. Um, and again, as I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned in that video, but I know I mentioned in other videos, if you have a live life claim witness on your live life claim that has passed away, that, that has left this domain, they are no longer a live breathing creature, then you must uh, get another live life claim and, and, and do your, your live life, update your live life claim. Because the whole purpose of it is to provide a continuance of the evidence that you are a living, breathing creature. Just like, you you know, they certify you. So, potentially, if someone wants to know, hey, is Jason a, a li living, breathing creature? I can give them the live life claim and point out the witnesses and they can contact those witnesses. And I say, is Jason alive? <laughs> and then... The live life claim witnesses would then say, yes, well, I witnessed them. That's why it's so important to get a correct witnessing on your live life claim. If you have a live life claim and you have witnesses on that live life claim that have never seen you, never spoken to you, at least by video chat, then they're not correct witnesses. They're, they have not witnessed you. That's the whole point of it. So I think that's something that a lot of people... Uh, don't know about. So hopefully that helps them out. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Rube Star, and they say, a match, a bullet, and a razor. Supposedly this is what is kept inside the ball at the top of a flag. Ah, they are uh, offering some closure on what... Uh, darn, I can't remember the guy's name, but some there was a Russell J. Gould uh, cult follower who was telling me that I should know something about a match, a bullet, and a razor, and it had to do with flag protocols, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And Rube's helped me out here. So it says, the match is to burn the flag. The bullet is to shot yourself in the event the enemy takes your post for at headquarters. I have not heard of the razor before. I was told this by someone who had learned this in Boy Scouts. Possibly the Marines teach the same or similar thing. Well, 
Now I'm curious, now that uh, Rube, which thank you very much, Rube Star, has provided context, I'm going to look it up on Google because Google is an awesome tool to get closure on some of these things. Here we go. There you see the ball up there. Uh, weapons are scant. You need to keep old glory from falling into enemy hands. What do you do? Scale the flagpole. At the top sits a little golden sphere known as the finale ball. Inside is a razor blade, a match, and a bullet. You must use the razor blade to cut the stars and stripes from the American flag, the match to burn the remains, and the bullet to defend yourself, to bend the base or shoot yourself, depending on the circumstances. But the boring truth is that the finale ball is there for pole maintenance. A number of military flagpoles were at once time topped with gold-colored eagles, but these proved impractical because flags would become hopelessly entangled in them during high winds. Switch to spheres eliminated the problems. This, that's a load of crap. Uh, there's plenty of flagpoles that have uh, eagles, chickens, whatever they are on top. And I've never once seen a flag get tangled, so that, that's pretty funny. So, you know, thanks, thanks for pointing that out. Now we know what the guy was talking about, but that's goofy. Because if a bullet's kept in there, what, what kind of bullet? You better hope that you have the, the matching firearm that matches that bullet, or, and you only have one. So, I mean, that's just kind of goofy. Thanks for the comment and for the clarity. Next comment comes from colon Sean hyphen Daniel colon Taylor. Thank you for the membership, Sean. He says, in that CSS scenario, would you not be underlining all the facts? As I see, you only underlined writ performance. Thanks. Is it because you only underline compound facts when they are hyphenated? Like more than one. Uh, there are a couple scenarios that you would use the underline and correct sentence structure, Sean. Um, I use it when the platform allows you to use it. Now, YouTube does not allow you to underline things in descriptions of videos and titles of videos, so it's not used there. But in a Word document or open source document, you can use the underline. And so I do underline compound facts. I underline full punctuated names so that they are anything that's underlined or bottom lined would be known to be taken as one thing, as to be taken as a whole. Um, just like a compound fact, or a name, or a title if you choose. Also, if you're going to use a fact with a particle of negation in it, you would also underline that and then sick it, and then you would have to give closure to that in your dictionary. And although we do not use particles and negations in facts as a general rule in correct sentence structure, Sometimes you do simply be, you know, for easy communication, like the word adverb. You would underline that and sick it. Uh, adjective, same thing. Pronoun, same thing. Um, as a fact, simply because if you don't do that, then if you wanted to come, how would you come up with a positive performance fact to use in place of adverb? Or to use in place of adjective? Or to use in place of pronoun? You wouldn't. It would just confuse the matter. Now, I have done things as taken words with a vowel in front of a consonant, uh, like U-S-E for use or usury, and <clears throat> I've salvaged uh, them. Not, not that word, but I, I use the word O-E-T-I for use or usury. It's a positive performance word, and it is in the line of continuance of the evidence. If you look up use, in an etymology dictionary, it goes back to the word O-E-T-I, which is positive performance because it's two vowels in front of a consonant. So I've done things like that as well as with the word equal and also the word one, O-E-N, so that those are positive performance. Um, but that's what I do, you know, different strokes for different folks. Thanks for the question. Next comment comes from Dominic D'Angelo and they say, question for you. Because you claim to strictly be a tutor, I thought it would be too forward to ask your services in assisting me with syntax and documents I have. That said, I never asked and still don't want to break the terms of your email port. The idea just occurred that I simply ask here. Well, actually, anything like that would be asking my email port. But it all comes back to the grammar, Dominic. Um, 
I do provide services for syntaxing documents for people, but there is one condition. You, yourself, have to have a rudimentary closure on syntax. You have to have a rudimentary closure on correct sentence structure. Because me syntaxing a document for you, and you don't know what I'm doing, you don't know why I've banked the values I've banked, and you can't explain what syntax is to someone else, that document would have no use to you whatsoever. I mean, it would have no value. It would hold no weight because I'm the one that's doing it, not you. You see what I'm saying? Sure, I mean, I, I could charge like thousands of dollars to syntax documents for people and send it out, but it, I don't think it would have the result that they think it would unless they have closure on the grammar. That's why it comes back to the grammar. It's the most important thing, Dominic. So I highly recommend learning the grammar. And then, if uh, I can certify that you have a certain level of closure on the grammar, then I most certainly would help you uh, syntax a document. JasonMatthewG17 at gmail.com is the correct venue uh, to talk about this. Simply because I would immediately offer a 10 to 15 minute video consult and we can talk about it, rather than in a comments field on YouTube, which is the least efficient place to get closure on things like this next comment comes again from the member sean daniel taylor and they say the authorities tell you that this is a 20 mile per hour zone now obey it and then my kuleana was are you implying that you don't feel you should drive safely i was returning the same energy that sean was bringing here and this went on if you can check it out in that video right there the the comment thread where he goes on to say that um, he's a safe driver, you know, this is the paraphrase, and saying that uh, he doesn't feel that he should be threatened by fines and sanctions and things like that simply to do good or, or obey a speed limit. And that's all well and fine, okay? But that's only one side of the story, so I asked him repeatedly, like three or four times, in different ways, I said, well, what's your solution to this then? If you don't like that, then what is your solution to basically sanction people who are not safe drivers, to sanction people who are reckless, who are malicious and perhaps criminal and don't care if they run children over or run dogs over. What's your solution to stopping that or to keeping that in check or reducing that type of thing? Um, what, what's your solution? And of course, <laughs> he didn't have one. Um, and I find that that's, you know, that's the, the part of the psychology that's lacking because for the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, if you're going to come forward with a problem, then you need to also have a remedy or a solution to the problem. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm doing this on this channel is that the pro what is the problem? The problem is the fiction system and being controlled by it and things like that. What's the solution? Be a steward of your grammar. Learn the grammar so that you can deal with these things when you're being trespassed on or you feel like you're being trespassed on. But if you don't have closure on the grammar, then it's lopsided. There is no geometric level playing field and you get a scenario like Sean has here where he has a problem, but he doesn't have a solution. Um, so that's the best I can offer there. Um, just learn the grammar. And then... You know, I think psychologically you will come into a balance as to why things are the way they are and how you can deal with it if you feel you're being trespassed upon. Ah, here's another uh, comment along the same thread. He says, also all the rules, regulations, legislations, laws passed down by your so-called authorities, i.e. governments, are all illegal and fraudulent. That is not true um, because everything authorities and governments do in the fiction system is legal. It's part of the legal system. Okay? It's only illegal, not legal, if it goes against their system. Legal is a fiction term. Because everything is done by contract. Yes, everything is contract. That is correct. Well, show me the contract. Seven plus billion people have signed with these authorities to be governed all over the planet. Well, there's a thing. I mean, if you feel that contract only happens on a written document, then that's for you what contract is. For me, I can contract with, uh, you know, looking at somebody and shaking their hand. That's, that's as good a contract for me as any. 
it just depends, you know, correct sentence structure comes in when someone's being bureaucratically trespassed upon. Um, that's how that works. They're a fictitious entity that do not serve to benefit or protect the men and women of this planet, period. Um, in a sense, that is true, yes. Uh, but there are actually some fiction entities that do benefit uh, men and women in some places, you know, like, for example, the men and women who are in hardship and they are able to get, you know, assistance so that they can feed their children. What, what, what's that? That's a sort of a benefit, isn't it? So it's not all black and white, actually, here. Um, I think what, what would be, if I could suggest something as far as psychology goes, that Sean, you know, perhaps try to put himself in other people's shoes. Not only like the sort of people that I'm just talking about who have fallen upon hardships, but also all those employees of the fictitious system who also have families and children that they must feed. You know, you gotta you gotta play the tape the whole way through. It's it's kind of limiting to only think from your own perspective. Uh, next comment comes again from RDPD, and they say thank you very much. How wonderful to receive an answer. By video. Not everyone takes the time and effort to reply with a complete closure video. I'm sorry I'm not replying in correct sentence structure, but I have to show some love for the things you do. To all the people, please do show this man the love. He deserves much love and respect, Ricardo. Well, thank you, Ricardo. Appreciate that. And uh, as I've said in other videos, I mean, if you don't know correct sentence structure, that's fine. Uh, I'd much rather you prefer, I'd much rather prefer you give your kuleana like this using plain, simple English than to try and use, you know, quantum grammar, a mishmash. It just comes off as more confusing, to me anyways. So, thank you very much. Real quick, what I'd like to do here, and this is without any fanfare or doing a reaction video or anything. I had a couple people ask me about this individual here, quantum grammar coach, and told me to take a look at his channel, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, real quick at the end of this comments video. So, um, as you see here, he has 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. And then he has cause plus consequence equals possession. But I mean, that is not the correct representation of the mathematical interface on grammar. That's not how it works. I've done several videos on that, so I highly recommend you look that up in my correct sentence structure playlist. What I'm going to do is take a look at this sentence to show uh, some holes in, in what this individual, this coach, is teaching. So he has, the is a non-tangible contract, adverb modifying cause into a verb, non-tangible of into an adverb, and then he has the as tangible contract, fact-based here. So here he has it as non-fact base and here he has the as fact base that's a contradiction because either you know in correct sentence structure one and one is one either a word is fact base or it's non-fact base it can't be both so when you look the word up and you go to the earliest nativity root meanings of the word the is always non-tangible so it would never be an adjective so thus the rest of the syntax is incorrect he also syntaxes is as non-tangible contract when it's quite clearly tangible contract. It comes from the, um, the Proto-Indo-European root, which means to grow, to exist. And I have a tangible contract with what it means to grow and to exist. And what could be more tangible contract than thinking? Is is the verb of the thinking in correct sentence structure. Try to navigate through life without thinking. <laughs> So that's the most tangible contract. Um, again, he has the as non-tangible here and here. So that, that is not correct. So let's go backwards here, and I will give you the correct syntax. So we have authority, which would be a dangling participle verb being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the. By would be non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by uh, adjective possession which is being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the. With is a non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract adjective is. 
which is being colored by tangible contract adjective consequence. And in consequence, by the way, there's a particle of negation, SE, because anytime SE comes in front of, you know, you have con, C, quence. So SE is a particle, and it comes before a hard consonant, it's a particle of negation. So there's a particle of negation in that word, just pointing that out. And that's being modified by adverb the, and then of is non-tangible contract pronoun, being colored by a tangible contract adjective cause, and then the is a non-tangible contract adverb. So there's a brief little syntax tutorial for Quantum Grammar Coach. Um, so I hope that helps them in their classes that they're giving, so on and so forth. I highly recommend a thorough uh, examination and study of my syntax playlist on my channel, which has, I think, around 60 videos on there, plus, you know, the mini classes as well. So thanks for watching. I'm out. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.